Now we'll just focus on looking at the contrast and texture between the AE horizon and the BT horizon below. So in this case, the AEG and the BTG. So just like we have been doing, we'll take a little ball of soil. And so the AE crumbles up quite easily. Start to ball that up. Okay, so it, it does hold together quite well. So it's not uh, it's not a pure, uh, it's not overly sandy. It does hold together well, indicating that there's still a little bit of clay left in here. But once we start to work a little bit of the moisture out of this and try and form it into a ribbon, we see that it, it, it's basically a really weak ribbon. It doesn't hold together overly well. So even though it forms a ball, it doesn't really form a great ribbon. The ribbon just sort of curls around my finger and if, in terms of uh, getting it to, to break at a natural point, it's, uh, it's not overly strong, probably on the order of about two and a half to three centimeters. And so I would, uh, I would look at this then and say that this is probably tending towards a bit, towards the uh, a, a, a loamier, uh, a loamy structure. And then if I just wet that up and feel for the grittiness within that, can feel that there's a bit of uh, a bit of grit here, so a bit of sand. So maybe this would be fall into the category then, probably fall into the category of a of a sandy a sandy loam uh, a sandy loam texture within this AEG horizon. So now, if I just take a moment here and try and look at the contrast now between this and the horizon underneath it, that gives us uh, basically a a good idea of what the major processes are that are contributing to the, uh, the, the contrast that we're seeing here. So now I've got a sample here of the, of the BTG horizon. And so even if I just put it together without adding any water to it, you see that it holds together very strongly, indicating that there is a lot of clay present in this. And so when I start to work this into a ball, I'll add a little bit of water to it. It takes a little while because to work the water into it to make an adequate ribbon, um, just because the clay itself, uh, it's hard to get the, the water inside the clay units. Once it's in there, it's very tightly held. And that's what makes clay such a, uh, a, a good soil for agricultural crops in the prairies because it holds onto water even un for a much longer period under dry conditions. So it holds together very strongly. You can see it basically looks like plasticine or modeling clay already. And if I start to try and squeeze this into a, squeeze this into a ribbon, in contrast to the AE horizon above, which formed a really weak ribbon, we can see that this is forming a much stronger ribbon. So in excess of five centimeters. And even when I was playing around a little bit earlier with this particular soil, I was actually able to form a ribbon that was uh, seven or eight centimeters long here. Oh, almost actually up to 10 centimeters. So it's got a significant amount of clay associated with this. So this would be the glacial till parent material, and we would call this a clay textured uh, glacial till parent material. Similarly, if I take a little pinch of this and wet it in the palm of my hand, it's hard to even break up. But there's, there's still a little bit of grit associated with it because it is a till. It's not just a pure clay soil. So it would probably be a, uh, a clay or even a sandy clay texture till material. And we know that it's till because we found quite a few large stones as we were digging up this soil pit. We found a number of stones within the BT horizon as well.